we're halfway through The Apprentice and thanks for your support for these roundups. I couldn't put it any better than Sandish did in her pitch this week when she said, like E. coli and influenza, this brand is going viral. It's a great comparison. Yeah, like thrush or domestic violence, these roundups are out of sight. But onto this week's task, beginning with a surprise 7.30 a.m. visit from Lord Sugar, who asks, is this Stuart Bags the brand? No, it's Stuart Bags the bag, looking like a sack of potatoes. Their challenge is to come up with an advertising campaign for a new brand of household cleaner. Chris leads Team Synergy, citing as his relevant skills, I was a sniper in the Royal Marines, so well used to cleaning up the odd bit of Iraqi brain then. And Alex leads Apollo, saying, if I was an apple pie, the apples inside would be orange. I'd hate to see a spotted dick. You can interpret that whichever way you wish. I'm wondering if the teams Apollo and Synergy will get whittled down to one team uh, and the name will fuse and become Apology. Posh Chris suggests The Germinator as a brand name and Alex says, I just think it won't be taken seriously, but goes for it anyway. Has to La Vista Gravy, quips Stuart, somewhat portentously adding, this is going to be memorable. Yeah, just like the Hindenburg. <laughs> That's a terrible thing to say. Sniper Chris holds auditions for the romantic lead to co-star with him in his octopus-based TV spot, observing sex sells everything, but failing to see his own shortcomings in that respect. He actually deploys a phrase which I suspect he's more often on the receiving end of. Wow, that was quick. Nick is not impressed. In 2010, you do not show this kind of 1950s schmaltz. All the while watching the proceedings as if he was looking at his cat vomiting on an old wax jacket. Pouty-mouthed Laura watches Sandish prepare her pitch with ill-disguised contempt, observing the content is bollocks. They pitch, the advertising experts openly laugh at them, Alex shakes both fists rather limply and says, well done. And Jamie's voiceover really annoys me when he says, well, eight hands are better than two. 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 It's two. Two. Twat. Meanwhile, in the Sugarmobile, the producer is obviously sitting just off camera and feeding non-committal lines to Lord Sugar to spout that will be handy in the edit, like bad mistakes made on both sides. Back in the boardroom, they review the ads and Lord Sugar says, it reminds me of one of your friend's midnight movie DVDs, Nick. And what the hell does Nick get up to? We've already had mention of Amsterdam. I bet he's pure filth, that one. I bet he's all over it like a tramp on chips. Now that's a charming phrase coming from a millionaire. While the octopi go and do karaoke, <laughs> did the budget run out already? What'll it be next week? A KFC bargain bucket and a Ben Affleck DVD. Alex asks for feedback in the calf, noting, it's gone very silent. <laughs> is that is that good news or bad news, guys? <laughs> I'll give you a clue, Alex. It's bad news. Back in the boardroom, Alex's head is tipping further and further over like a caged budgie. And any second, I expect him to shuffle along his perch and start pecking his bell. Ding, 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 ding. But there is no kosher love for Alex this week. He sent packing before Sandish even has time to do her trademark boardroom. What? Startled eyes. And in the cab home, Alex says with a quail in his voice, I'm going to found my own businesses. I don't need him. Goodbye then to our favourite UHOC unemployed head of communications and good luck back in the house Stuart predicts if Alex comes back then I will genuinely eat an item of clothing from every single one of you pervert I respect that see you next week